Good evening and welcome to BizTech's Personal Finance Show. Today, our focus is really on demystifying robo-advisors, what they are, how they work, and how they can help you achieve your financial objectives. Now, here to give us some insights is Wong Wai Ken, Country Manager of Malaysia at Stash Away. Now, thanks for coming on the show, Ken. Hi, Brian. Nice to be with you. Thanks for inviting me on the show. Now, Ken, give us an overview of Stash Away and your history in Malaysia. Right. Um, big picture, just think about Stash Away as a digital wealth advisor or known as robo-advisor in certain markets like the US. We are regulated by the MAS in Singapore and the Securities Commission here in Malaysia to essentially be a fund manager. So we were founded in 2016 by our co-founders, Michele, Nino, and Freddy um, in 2016 in Singapore. And then we expanded to Malaysia, a natural adjacent market with a lot of similarities actually in 2018. So um, we're now in three additional countries. Uh, we are live in Dubai and we are looking to launch in Hong Kong and Thailand um, by the end of this year. So collectively, we also manage over uh, 1 billion US in customers' wealth. So we're just beginning our journey and we hope to make a big dentist in the in the wealth management space here in the region and also around the world. Okay, could you help us understand exactly what does a robo-advisor do? Yeah, so investing is complicated, it's difficult. So what we want to do is make things easy for people, right? So essentially just think about us as an investing platform, a digital fund manager, a digital unit trust platform, if you will. So all you have to do to take action is actually just download the app, and choose your level of risk that you want to invest at. Risk is as important as returns, mind you. Uh, deposit your funds online, and then we will invest that money for you, right? So using the app, you can also monitor your investments, make withdrawals for whatever personal use you, you want. So it's all very, very seamless, all very easy, and you don't need to walk into a branch, you don't need to fill up a form, you don't need to sign anything physically or thumbprint anything physically. So. All it takes is an app and 15 minutes to, to start investing. Help me just uh, uh, understand this a little bit better. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Essentially, you use algorithms to automate investment portfolio decisions. That's one thing. The algorithm creates a portfolio once you sign up and it depends on your risk and tolerance. Yep. Yeah, and then uh, yeah. uh, uh, investing goals and risk tolerance actually. And also then it periodically then rebalances your portfolio. Yeah. So I think you, you got the gist of it. And I think it's really important to, to not be fixated on jargon. Actually, uh, let people know, let, let investors know what the actual value is, is to them, right? So you mentioned a few things. And we use uh, the data that you've put into the app for us to recommend you a portfolio that suits your risk profile and the investment goals that you have in mind. So you don't need to be a PhD in econometrics to, to, to invest. You just need to know your personal uh, investment goals and we will guide you towards a portfolio that suits you. Um, and then the second thing you mentioned is uh, an investment framework, which I think sets us apart from other robo-advisors because periodically we re-optimize the portfolio to give you a asset allocation or a mix of assets to best suit that phase of the economic environment. Just last year, we were in a you know, relatively moderately deep recession. This year, we were in a, uh, our, you know, in a recovery mode and the portfolio should not look the same, right? So we also have that framework where we take into account economic data to determine where we are in the economic cycle to then periodically change those portfolios uh, like you mentioned. So I will say that in terms of technology, we have first of all, a recommendation engine, which is based on inputs and then an investment framework, which takes into account data to give you a portfolio that suits that economic environment. What is the investing methodology around it? Yeah, so it starts off with a few um, core philosophies. It starts off with diversification and, and risk management, because those two things are really important for people to, to have in their portfolio as an embedded philosophy, right? And then you talk about how do you express those things? Um, do you trade short term? Do you trade long term? Um, what is your, uh, what kind of securities do you invest in, right? So because we believe in building wealth for the long term, we essentially build portfolios using 
exchange traded funds, which are uh, very, very uh, established in the in the US. And that's where we choose to, to invest our clients' money as well. So we take these ETFs and we form portfolios of different risk levels. And, uh, and the philosophy really is to navigate the long term. So to navigate the long term, you need to have the right portfolio given the right uh, economic environment you are in. So for example, in a recessionary environment, you would have a portfolio that's largely protective, a lot more gold allocation, a lot more uh, protective assets like, like bonds, um, equity sectors like uh, utilities, healthcare, consumer staples, safe things to invest in in tough times. And then when you transition to uh, a recovery like we're in now, you would naturally then invest in things that are more cyclical, things like energy, financials, tech, emerging markets, and things like that. So that's our philosophy. We don't want people to be reactionary to whatever Jay Powell says or whatever mm-hmm. President Trump has, is tweeting. We want people to look through the noise, look through the volatility and invest for long term. And for that to happen, we also need to make it data driven. And, and that's not just a buzzword, you know, because we actually take in economic data to determine where we are in the economic cycle and therefore what asset allocation to, to invest for, for clients. So since the start, we have, uh, which we launched in mid 2017, and it's a uh, uh, kind of first quarter 2021 now, our analyzed performance across our range of, of portfolios is between 3.5% per annum for the most conservative portfolio, mm-hmm. all the way to 17.5% for the most aggressive portfolio. So okay, it's that's quite a reach. It's quite a reach because we have 12 portfolios and it really depends on on what portfolio suits you, right? So the positive performance ranging all between our 12 portfolios is something that we're very proud of because in the three and a half years we've been around, there have been a couple of recessions in uh, 2018 and obviously the COVID crisis and the OPEC oil crisis last year in 2020. So we've come through um, not just building wealth in good times, but also protecting wealth in really tough times. Now, Ken, who is the target audience for Stashaway? Great question, right? Because it's Stashaway is a really, really a product which um, can suit a variety of people. But specifically, we target the busy individual, people like you and I, who are focused on our careers, people in financial services, people in tech, oil and gas, consulting. These are actually the top uh, three, top four segments of, of clients. In Singapore, the, the top Five also includes people in government services. So it's people in the mass affluent category making more than 150, 200,000 a year, uh, largely white collar professionals, but really it's for anyone who wants to invest. And obviously that market is, is quite broad. We welcome new investors, you know, fresh grads who are looking to put their money to work or even high net worths and you know, accredited investors who, who want to use Stashway for a very specific purpose. Now, um... Can you tell us what is the advantage of using a robo-advisor versus other options? Yeah, so that's the reason why Stashway was started in the first place. Wealth, uh, wealth management is, and, and investing your own money is, is difficult, even though you are in the right space, even though you have the right qualifications, can be very confusing, really, in con- uh, not, not a lot of convenience built in. So the real advantage of using a robo-advisor is, is threefold. Firstly, it's a matter of, um, of cost right? Cutting away the middleman, the distributor really helps our investors save fees. And every amount of fees that you save goes back to your net return, which is really, really important uh, to to us to align that interest. So we charge really low fees to begin with. And what are your fee ranges like? Absolutely. So uh, we start managing money at 0.8% per annum. So, Mm -hmm. you know, if you you invest uh, 10,000 with us per year, we only charge 80 $80. $80. And um, it's something that is a huge discount to the market because you usually start with agents at 5% sales charge to begin with and 2% on top of that for management fees. So you talk about 7% versus 0.8%. That's the market we are really disrupting. Absolutely. Because I think one of the things that people never realized, myself included many years ago, is the fact that, yeah, you may get decent returns out of your unit trust fund, but the, the fees take out tremendous amounts. So your net returns are actually far lower than, in fact, I had an investment uh, in a large 
uh, 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 multiple funds in a unit trust and net of fees, uh, it was less than EPF. Yeah, that's the, a very well-worn tale that we have uh, experienced in this region, not only in Malaysia, but also in Singapore and also the other three markets that we're looking to go into. But that's, that's a, the state of affairs, right? And we thought we could do better. Cost is a pillar. But add to that other advantages, you know, just think about how inconvenient, uh, how in, inconvenienced you are to go and have coffee at a branch and meet their private banker who's looking to make fees out of you. And um, think about the time you have to take out of your calendar to sign out of your forms and, and all those kind of things. And imagine if you want to withdraw your funds, you have to meet someone or go to a portal that doesn't have great UI. That's, that's, that's another thing we want to disrupt, right? So having that convenience, you tap into an app, you press a few buttons and you can withdraw your money, you can deposit more money, you can automate your investments by making recurring investments even. So we want to make it very easy for you. But the last thing is, is really at the core of it as an investment platform, you have to have an investment service that is differentiated and at the end of the day, it makes money, right? So in Singapore and the markets that we're heading into, there's a lot of home bias. People only invest in things that they understand. So yeah. we need people to invest globally, which is why each portfolio is not just multi-asset, but also um, across different regions and different countries. So you're truly, truly diversified. And the returns, as I mentioned before, through good times and bad are, are stellar. So combining cost and convenience along with the intelligence of each portfolio, we think we're onto a winning combination. And might I add also, and, and, and again, uh, because this is something that uh, uh, I'm interested in, robo-advisory gives you that big advantage, of course, uh, of diversification, not being emotionally involved in that investment decision because that mm -hmm. is taken away by algorithms. And of course, it's passive investing. For me, I think those are the key things because as you said, busy professional, you don't have time to look at things. You don't want to get emo emotional. You're not a trader. You want to build wealth for the long term. Mm -hmm. This is a convenient way to tick all those boxes. Yeah, and um, Brian, just to add on to your point, there are many investors of different stripes, right? So, you know, for someone like you, you might want that set and forget way of investing. And then there are other investors who do love stock picking, have the time and the passion for it. And for those people, Stash Away also complements their investing style because there are other markets that they don't participate actively. They pick stocks in Malaysia or Singapore, but they also don't really know much about the US or other countries in the region, other asset classes. So if you just couple of, uh, you know, your style with, with however you use Stash Away, that's really how you can make the most out of the platform. Now, uh, Ken, what sort of percentages right now in terms of your, your portfolios do you have in US equity versus bonds versus say local equities? It ranges. So the, the most aggressive portfolio is equivalent to 100% equities and the most conservative is equivalent to almost 100% bonds. And then in between, you obviously have that 60-40 ratio that, that a lot of balanced investors like. So let me just give you a, a big picture about where we are seeing markets right now, especially coming, up, coming out of 2020. So in 2020, where, where the US government was, was trying to stimulate the economy and printing a lot of dollars, still printing a lot of dollars, the, the house view was that we would see a gradual depreciation in the USD and therefore USD denominated um, equities and bonds. Yes. So because of that, we actually um, re-optimized um, using, using the, the framework I mentioned earlier to get more exposure to protective assets like gold, which were very helpful in, in last year's volatility and also into the Asia region, specifically Chinese tech sector, which has done very well because they don't rely on physical supply chains in the reopening and also because the, you know, their, their tech sector that is as vibrant as, as, as the US, but not you know, denominated in US. So that's really where our, our direction is right now. And we, the world is constantly changing, right? The, 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 yep. the US is looking at antitrust. Uh, the Chinese uh, uh, government is looking at reining in its, it, its, its tech entrepreneurs. So when the data is apparent, we could also make strategic changes to the asset allocation. So that's the big picture. And 
the, the point though, in the short term is not to really worry about the, the Fed, um, the Fed's intervention in the markets or the, the stimulus package or the vaccine rollout. That obviously are, are risk factors, but we have to have a portfolio that cuts through all that noise. And we think that this year is, is much less riskier than last year as well. So we still ask people to focus on the, the long term. And where does Stash Away fit in as part of my overall wealth management and portfolio strategy? So I've, I, you know, uh, I'm, I'm 50 years old. Um, I've, I've, I've got these assets. What would you recommend in terms of Stash Away's position overall? Yeah, so as someone who is um, middle-aged, fairly experienced in terms of investing, we think it's actually perfect for Stash Away to actually be a part of your core portfolio, meaning that, of course, you have a few investment properties. Of course, you have a healthy balance in CPF or EPF. So maybe you have some blue chip stocks that you're still holding and, and, and managing from time to time. So Stash Away really fits into your, your core portfolio when it, look, when it comes to global um, exposure. So again, coming back to home buyers, I think Malaysians have, have a lot of wealth in Malaysia. EPF included, uh, unit trust included, stocks included. So, so we think that for global exposure, Stash Away is perfect because the actual exposure, as I said, is multi-asset. And because of that, the, the currency impact that it has on your ringgit being put to work overseas also has, has an added benefit because in a basket of securities of currencies that may actually appreciate against the ringgit, like a lot of major currency have, the US dollar, the Singapore dollar, um, the euro. I think it's wise that Malaysians look towards overseas to invest. So I think if you're looking for passive, if you're looking for global, um, if you're looking for ETFs, Stashway has combined it for you and it should be part of your core portfolio. Now, if I want to do and get up and invest in Stash Away, what hmm. exactly do I need to do? So the first thing is to really understand your, your own personal finance situation, right? Um, I think it's important to understand your net worth and your investment goals. Also look at your current asset allocation right now. Is it, are you on, on the right level of risk or not? And then naturally do your research, talk to, to your friends. There's a lot of content on our website about how we manage your money. I think that's, that's really important. Don't just jump into anything that, that, that uh, you come across. And then once you are convinced and you believe in um, our approach, all you have to do is download the app or sign up on, on, on the web and deposit your money and, and we will invest on your behalf. So it's that simple, right? But please do your research upfront. Now, uh, thank you very much for your insights on this, Ken. Thanks, Brian. Now, I've got one final question before we go, though. Mm -hmm. Could you give us a couple of hints in terms of what one needs to do to be financially healthier in this right. very volatile market? Yeah, so I think it's about good habits. It's not about finding the right thing to do in different times. I think good habits are important to have, whether it's good times or it's bad times. People ask me a lot last year, what should I do? Right, but it's not about something new. It's about good habits that you should always have. And when when talking to investors, we always have them focus on four things. What is your investment timeline? Is it short or is it long? If it's long, you can actually afford more risk. If it's short, you should definitely look at things that are less risky. What is your risk profile? Have you invested before? How did it make you feel emotionally? Don't just invest in whatever your friend or your colleague tells you to. And what is your own risk profile? That's very important. Um, another thing is, is fees. We talked about fees and how it can erode your returns. I think that's very important. And then also diversification. So the last one, diversification, is investing in something adding to your diversification or is that platform already diversified, right? So in such a way's case, obviously, it's already diversified. So if you take into account these four things, you're well on your way to having good habits. And from there, it's just about understanding markets, understanding different products and how to get the best exposure to these markets. And over time, you'll be in very good stead. Ken, thank you very much for coming on the show. Absolutely, Brian. Thank you. Now, we've been speaking to Wong Wai Ken, Country Manager Malaysia for Stashaway.
on Biztech's Personal Finance Show. I'm Brian Fernandez. Check out www.biztech.asia for business and technology conversations.